getting late. You'd better call Mr. Butler. I done called him two times already, Miss Butler. Seems like he don't ever come down till I called him the third time. I think tomorrow morning I'm going to call him the third time first and save them other two calls. Goodbye, dear. Take care of yourself. See you tonight. Uh, Henry! Huh? Aren't you going to have your breakfast? Yeah, sure. Didn't I have my breakfast? Darling. My goodness, I'm so busy, I'm way ahead of myself. Memphis, why didn't you call me? I did call you, sir. I called you and called you till I was black in the face. Oh, you did, huh? Very good, Memphis. Very good. Black in the face. Did you hear that, honey? Pardon me. Pardon me. Let me have this piece, will you, please? What is that? Grace Norman's got a divorce from Jack. I picked you in the paper. Mm, she photographs well. Wish I photographed as well. Mm, that's too bad. They could really have made a success of it if they tried. Don't you think so, dear? Henry, did you hear what I said? What did you say, dear? I said Grace Norman has got her divorce from Jack. Oh, that's too bad. Who? Grace Norman. What about her? She got her divorce from Jack. My, my. Well, for goodness sakes, they seem such a happy couple to me. Miss Butler, there's a man on the phone that wants to know, do you want Dove or Bible figures on the cake or both? But the man's holding the phone. Somebody want me on the phone? No, dear. It's just, uh, uh, tell him I'll call him later, Uncle. Yes, sir. Hey, honey, look, I want to I call your attention to something. See that? Mm -hmm. That's mine. Look. See that? Mm -hmm. Goldberg's. No wonder he doesn't do any business. <laughs> Darling, what day is today? The seven says Tuesday. I mean the date, dear. The sixth. Does that mean anything to you? I'll say it does. Why, it's the day before our big annual sale. Look, honey, look. You see that? Every family in town has this on the breakfast table right now. Mm, you know, Henry, sometimes I think you're married to that department store instead of to me. Sometimes uh. I think I... Oh, honey, don't be silly. Uh-oh, eight o'clock. Got a big lake. Goodbye, dear. Take care of yourself. We'll see you tonight. Have you got your glasses? Yeah. And your keys? Yeah. And a clean handkerchief? Yeah. Well, Grace, you don't have to worry anymore about someone forgetting your anniversary. Do you, kid? I should say not. It's perfectly marvelous, Clara, this feeling of freedom. I keep pinching myself to see if I'm really awake. And I got the most wonderful property settlement, thanks to my brilliant attorney. He comes from the East. He's perfectly charming. His name is Gilbert Wayne. Oh, no, of course I'm not in love with him. Don't be silly. Really, Clara, I don't think I'll ever love again. Hold on a minute, dear. There's someone at the door. Why, Effie, darling! How sweet of you to come. Come on in. I'm talking on the telephone. Sit down, dear. Make yourself comfy. Help yourself to cigarettes. Oh, dear, I always forget you don't smoke. Hello, Clara. What were we talking about? Oh, yes, love. Well, personally, I'm through. There isn't a man living that I'd trust, not one. They're all born cheaters. It's Clara Drake. Sometimes I wonder how Wilbur ever puts up with her. But then he's such a stuffy boy. Huh? Uh-uh. Well, listen, dear, I'll have to say goodbye, but then I'll see you tonight. Are they invited to your anniversary dinner? You're going to Effie's party tonight? Well, then I'll see you there. Goodbye, dear. That fat woman, once she gets you on the phone, there's just no getting rid of it. Effie, how sweet you look. So, this is your 20th anniversary. Congratulations. I suppose Henry is beaming. Well, as a matter of fact, he forgot it. Effie, no. That's just the way my Jack started. I'd look into it. Well, there's nothing to look into. He simply forgot it. He doesn't forget the date he's to leave on his fishing trips, and he didn't forget the day he was to leave for his lodge convention but, in New York. But he did forget to come home on the day you expected him. But business kept him off the convention was over. <laughs> That's what he said. Someday you'll get your eyes open. Men are all alike. Liars. Cheats. I know. But my Henry isn't like other men. Oh, he's different. <laughs> That's exactly the way I used to feel about Jack. Then came the awakening. Oh, don't get the idea that I'm bitter. Not at all. Why, Jack and I are the best of friends. Oh, pardon me a minute. Hello, stranger. Come right in. Hello, Mrs. Norman. How are you today? Never felt better. Give me your hat. Come along. I have a friend I want you to meet. Mrs. Butler? Mr. Gilbert Wayne, my attorney. How do you do, Mrs. Butler? How do you do? Well, I suppose congratulations are in order, eh? Thank you. <laughs> 
Well, are all the little details taken care of? Oh, yes. Your husband's been very generous. Oh, you mean ex-husband. <laughs> Pardon me, your ex-husband. Now, here's your final decree, signed, sealed, and delivered. And here's your check. Settlement in full. Very generous, don't you think? Yes. Yes, indeed. But, of course, stinginess never was one of Jack's faults. Not so bad, eh? Hmm. <laughs> And I suppose he was just as generous with your fee. Well, if you remember, according to the settlement agreement, that was to be taken care of by you. What's that? Oh, oh yes, of course, certainly. Well, uh, you see... Uh, well, there's no hurry about it. Any time at your convenience. Yes, yes, of course. Well, I'll send you a check in the morning. Thank you. If you'll excuse me, I'll be running along. Goodbye, Mrs. Butler. Nice to have met you. Thank if you. I can ever be of any service oh, to you. Oh, save your breath, Gil. She's one of the happiest women I know. Married 20 years today, and to the same man. So? That's right. <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Butler. That's a record to be proud of. Yes, I think so. If we were all like Effie, you'd starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Wayne. Goodbye, Gil. Thanks again. I'll see you soon. Yes, I'll be in my office all day tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, how do you like him? Isn't he wonderful? By the way, have you invited Jack to your party? Well, under the circumstances, no. Well, in that case, do you mind if I bring Gil? You know, he said he'd like to meet some of my friends. Why, it's quite all right. Bring him by all means. Oh, yes, I, I mustn't forget to make a place card for him. How do you spell his name? Gilbert Wayne. W-A-N-E. Oh, we'll put that as a place next to Mrs. Drake, right there. Yes, ma'am. I sure glad to hear Mr. What's his name for coming. Why? Cause without him, it would have been 13. And 13 is bad luck, Miss Butler. Mighty bad luck. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Opal. Uh, what did you do with my present for Mr. Butler? Oh, yes, yes. Where do you want me to put it? I'll put it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Miss Butler, don't you think it's time you're getting dressed? It's getting late. Oh, I'm already kept to slip on my dress, and that won't take but a minute. Uh, has the ice cream come? Yes, ma'am. And the cake? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Memphis, have you put out Mr. Butler's clothes? Yes, ma'am. Good. I'll, I'll run up a change. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's his butler. Oh, what's the matter? You done walked under that ladder. Oh, is that all? I, I thought something had really happened. <laughs> Why, it's in the same place. That's bad. I wouldn't be surprised if this surprise party don't turn out to be the wrong kind of surprise. No, no, that's it. Doesn't make, doesn't make, doesn't make sense. Uh, get me Mr. Johnson Hosey to find me. I want to speak, uh, uh, huh? I want to, uh, Gone home? What did you take the afternoon off? I... No, seven o'clock? Oh, no, no, no. It can't be seven o'clock this time of the day. Can't be. Oh, it is seven o'clock this time of the day. Goodness sake. Well, what are you doing here? Why don't you go home? Goodness sake, seven o'clock. How time flies. Late for dinner again. And dinner will be cold and F will be mad. Nothing done. Work all day and do nothing. I'd like you to okay these fashion show numbers, H.J., before you go. See, we're using them the first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm disturbed over the shoulder sweep of this sweater. What's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. I can't see anything wrong with it. Well, I don't like it. How do you like the uh, drape of this formal? I don't approve of it. Well, frankly, neither do I. And that uh, change to the uh, turquoise blue. It's a bit daring, but the lines are gorgeous. I'm sure you'll agree that this cocktail ensemble is perfect. I don't like it. But it's Jay. I don't like it. Well, I'll make a substitution. Change to the uh, jersey print. Oh, it's Jay. I want you to see my arrangement of the wax models in the window display. I'm sure you'll like it. You think you'll have time? Hmm, I suppose so. Fine. Good. All right, come on, girls. Make those changes as fast as you can. Mr. Butler and I'll be downstairs. We'll see you there. Now, here's what I mean, H.G. Now, you take, uh, well, take the figure, for instance. By the way, I call her Hetty. Don't you think there's a resemblance? Hetty? Oh, yes. I saw her in that picture called Gone with the Wind. Wasn't she wonderful in that scene with Red Butler? That was oh. Vivian Leigh. That was Vivian who? Vivian Leigh. Never heard of her. But Hetty... Now, to get back to the figure. We not only call attention to the gown, but we also emphasize the vanity without stressing it too much. Mm -hmm, that sounds all right. Very good idea. 
Uh oh, careful there, H.G. After all, this is my department. If you want any changes made, just tell me. What's wrong? Well, I'm sorry, but I I, I thought maybe the, the hand should be tilted just... Tilted? Just a little bit, just a little tilt. But when he tilt. Like that? There, now, that looks much better. And is there anything wrong with Carol over there? Oh, Carol, now, let me see. Uh-huh, well, I think that... No, nothing wrong with Carol. She looks fine there, looks very comfortable. Very good likeness, too. It's a good job, good job, Mr. Sibley. Now, let's see, da 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 here. Oh, 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 no. The bed, the bed. I don't like the... And what's the matter with the bed? Well, I, I just don't like the position of the bed. You see, we're featuring the mattress and the bedding. See? Not the bed alone. Now, I'll show you something. Anyone passing by outside on the sidewalk and looking in here, all they can see is the foot of the bed. Just the foot. They can't see the... Look, I'll show you. Just move it over a little bit and I'll show you. Just a little bit. No harm, no harm, Mr. Sibley. Now, would you mind pushing the bed just a little bit to the right? That's it. Oh, too much, too much. Back a little bit more. Uh, too much. Now, just a teeny little bit. There, there you are. Now, you see, that looks better. And look, anyone passing by and looking through the window can visualize themselves sleeping peacefully on our double X slumber mattress. So see long, Wilma. Effie will never forgive us if we hold up her party. Be back in the gym. Everything looks lovely. Everything is fine. Now, there's just one more thing, Mr. Sibley. Now, I think that Carol would look much better over here on the bed than over there. Because over here, she would attract more attention to the bed. Don't you think? Definitely not. Well, I... Th oh, there you are, girls. H.J., will you okay these costumes? Sure, come here, little girl. Move it right around. Mm-hmm, very good, very fine. Say, now, Mr. Sibley, while we're at it, I just want to show you what I mean about Carol being over here. Now, wait, now, just watch this one. What are you looking at? Yeah. What are you looking at? Hmm. And on his 20th anniversary, too. Poor Effie. Well, I guess I've been in the wrong kind of business for the last 15 years. Wilbur. Come on. Oh. Now look, Clara. You're a pretty good friend of Effie's, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, then, keep your mouth shut. Now, come on, get what? in, let's go. What a funny thing. Never mind, come on, start the car. Don't, like... don't you think Carol looked much better here, like that? I most certainly do not. Come on, girls, let's go. Annette. Oh, I guess he didn't like it. Sibley say. Well, I've never given a party when it was a surprise for Henry before, and I'm just as nervous as a child. <laughs> you shouldn't be nervous about your own husband. Oh, but all of you know. Oh. Pardon me. Oh, Clara. Oh, hello, dear. 
Well, if we're late, you can blame Wilbur. Uh, you know his saving always some last-minute business to attend to. But you're not late, Clara. Mm. Henry isn't home yet. No. No. Well, <laughs> he's probably just working over something at the office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know how he is. When he has anything on his mind, time means nothing. Well, I mean, look into this, my dear, if I were you. What out? Oh, I'm oh. sorry, dear. No better kid, Jeffy. She's spoiled because my work's over at 3 o'clock. Mm. All men don't have banker's hours, you know. Oh, there's Mabel and Bert. Come along, dear. Oh, but I'll see you later. Oh, what are you laughing at? These old snapshots of you and Henry, well, they're priceless. Have you come to the one with Henry and me on our honeymoon with Niagara Falls in the background? No, no. not yet. <laughs> when you see the hat I'm wearing in that one, you'll die. <laughs> uh, what an awfully smart dress, Clara. So becoming. Don't you think it thins you down a bit? Oh, thank you, dear. Well, you know there's a great deal of competition these days, Effie. But I'll never lose Wilbur through my carelessness and appearance. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you putting on a little weight, dear? Oh, a little perhaps, but it doesn't bother me. Henry likes it, and he's all that matters. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Pardon me, please. Hey, when do we eat? Shh. As soon as Henry gets here, be patient. Patient? I walked out on a deal that would have made me 2,000 bucks to get here on time. Hello, Hello darling. How are you? Good evening, Mr. Wayne. Hello. My dear, my dear, would you ever forgive us for being so late? We got caught in the most frightful traffic jam and just the one time in my life I wanted to be on time. Was Henry surprised what he said? Well, you're not late. As a matter of fact, Henry isn't home yet. Uh, of course, he didn't know I was giving this party for him, but he's never been this late for dinner before. Well, have you phoned the store? Uh, no, no, because I expected him any minute. How's Jack been doing? How'd he come out on that deal? Oh, it was simply wonderful what he did. Well, that's marvelous. Well, well darling, will you get me another glass of punch? Doesn't it seem strange to you that Henry isn't home yet? Why, yes, it does seem I so. could tell them where he is. Why? What do you mean? Well, on the way down, Wilbur had to stop at the office. That's near Henry's store. And she got out of the car and went over to the window, and, uh, And when she peeked in the window, there was Henry. <gasps> The water runs deep, you know. He was born under the sign of Leo, and they're born playboys. How do you know what sign he was born under? His birth date's the same month as mine. Oh, then what does that make you? Are you reading the right number? Uh, Garfield, 3651. Oh, you are. Thank you. I feel so sorry for poor Effie. If she ever finds it out, it will break her heart. There he was, sitting on the bed with a beautiful girl. Not Henry Butler. Henry Butler. Well. Uh, uh, what's the matter, Miss Butler? Look like you done seen a ghost. Oh, Memphis, I, I'm so worried about Mr. Butler. Will you take the car and go down to the store and see what has happened to him? Yes, ma'am. I sure wish you hadn't walked under that ladder. But, uh, it's very important. She, uh, she got an awful uh, blow there. She, she looks terrible. It's awfully bad. Huh? Oh, no, no. You can't wait until in the morning. I got to get her fixed up tonight. She got to be in the window in the morning. Yeah, I'm in a hurry. Huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks, Max. Thanks. All right, I'll drive her right down. I'll be right down there right away. Yeah, okay.
Lot for a black sedan. License in B column. One six B nine eight eight. One six B nine eight eight. Body of dead woman reported in back seat of car. Man is dangerous. May be armed. That is all. Rosenberg. Now don't worry, Mr. Butler. She had a pretty bad bump, but I'll have her back in the morning looking like she just stepped right out of a beauty shop. That's fine, Max. That's a load off of my mind. Now I can go home and have dinner in peace. Dinner? Yeah. What? At 9.30? Is it 9.30? My, my. Bedtime. What'll that be say? I I'm sorry to have kept you all so late. I know you must be starved. You said it, Effie. Bertram. Well, I'm hungry. It's early yet, Effie. Let's give him a few more minutes. How would it be if I did some of my card tricks? Oh, thank you so much, Wilbur. But I think we'll have dinner now. Come along, folks. Oh, <laughs> well, folks, let's have a toast. Oh, I love toast. Make it a funny one. <laughs> to our charming hostess, may we all live to be invited to her golden wedding. Oh, isn't that cute? That's very sweet. And to our invisible host, absent in person, but uh, with us in spirit. I am not. Now look, a fresh guy. What did you do with the blonde woman you had in your car? I didn't have a woman in my car. You didn't, eh? No. We found these in the back seat of your car. How do you alibi that? Oh, oh, I know. They must have fallen off a of carol when I carried out of the car. I thought you said you didn't have a woman in the car with you. I didn't. Well, then who's this carol? She's a model. I suppose a model ain't a woman. Now we're getting somewhere. Where did you hide her? I didn't hide her. I took her down to Max to get her fixed up. Fixed up? Yeah, Max said he'd fix her up so that Mr. Sibley wouldn't know about the accident. Accident? Uh. Sibley, Matt, wait a minute. Now let's get started right from the beginning. Well, to begin with, Mr. Sibley wouldn't let me touch her. So there's another man in the case. Jealous, eh? No, but he thinks a lot of her, too. This guy, Sibley, and you are goofy over the same blonde. You take her away from him and, uh... No, no, no. No, you see, it was like this. He left me alone with her. And after he'd gone, I picked Carol up and I was taking her across the room to the bed. I want to lay her down there. But going over there, I tripped and she fell to the floor. And, and when she fell, she must have hit her head on the bed. Yeah. And go on. Yeah, I'll go on. Yeah. So I turned her, her over, see? And when I did, I noticed a big gash in her head. And I knew that if Sibley came the next morning and found that big gash in her head, he'd be furious. I know Sibley. Huh. So, what'd I do? I pick her up and take her over to Max to get her fixed up, and I was hurrying home to dinner when an officer stopped me. Well, of all the cold-blooded guys that I ever met... Mr. Police, I tell you, I ain't done nothing. No, I suppose you just drove that car in the city hall fountain to watch it. No, sir, I had a nervous shock, and I was tearing out for home when the fountain just jumped right up in front of me. I... Oh, Mr. Butler, they done catch you, didn't they? You know this man? Yes, I was for it. So you're in on the murder, too? No, sir, not me. Where's the body? I don't know what he done with it. I told you, it's down to Max Waxworks. Max Waxworks? Yes, Max Waxworks. If you don't believe it, go down and see. Flanagan, lock these mugs up before I go screwy. I gotta have time to figure this out. Come on, you. Hey, you can't do this. O'Brien, oh, the whole thing is screwy. Max Waxworth, Sylvie. Yeah, that's swell time. No fooling, Effie. It was great. Really? Come along, Clara. Yes. I know just how you're feeling, dear. But don't worry. Henry will have a good excuse for not coming home. I hope. Clara? Uh, come in, dear. Good night, darling. <laughs> good night. <laughs> Well, as usual, always the last to leave. Good night, Effie. Good night, Good night, Mrs. Butler. Oh, good Thanks night. so much for inviting me. Well, I'm so glad you joined us. I hope to have the pleasure of meeting your husband sometime. I'm sure you will. What do you mean, Gil? In court? Oh, no, no. I didn't mean it that way, Mrs. Butler. Oh, I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> good night, Effie. Good night, my dear. Come on, Gil. So you're Henry's different. Ha, ha, ha. The next time you take a wax model down to Max Waxworks, I hope you do it on my day off. Now get out. Here, take these with you. Come on, Memphis. I'm gone. What are you doing that for? I figured the quiet eyes getting in, the less noise is going to be later on. Yeah. I think you got something, man.
what's all this? That was your 20th anniversary dinner. My anniversary? No, it couldn't have been. Could... It was. I said it was. Yeah, you said it was. Why didn't you tell me it was my anniversary? You didn't ask me. Oh, no. Good night, boy. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why all the sneaking? Oh, I didn't want to wake up my wife. She. Hello, Effie dear. Hello, Effie. I. I bet she thinks something's wrong. Whoever the gal is, she certainly has a dainty foot. What are you going to do about it? Well, I. I don't know. Nothing like this has ever happened before. How do you know it hasn't? Just because you didn't catch him doesn't say it didn't happen. Well, I have... Now, I, listen, Snow White. All men are cheaters at heart. Now, don't say, my Henry's different, because he isn't. Well, I... I, I, I know it seems a little... A little? What does it take to convince you? Both shoes? With a blonde in them? Now, you just let me handle this and be thankful you had your eyes open while you're still young. If you're calling Henry, I don't want to talk to him. That's the spirit, but I'm not calling Henry. Hello, Mr. Wayne, please. Oh, is that you? Hello, Gil. Well, I've got another client for you. Uh-huh. Mrs. Butler. Uh, Mr. Gilbert Wayne to see you, sir. I don't want to see anybody. Nobody at all. I'm a very sick man. Very yes. sick. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thank but... you. Mr. Butler? My name is Gilbert Wayne. How do you do, Mr. Wayne? What can I do for you? I'd like to talk to you about your wife's divorce. Yes, yes. Go on. Divorce? Yes. Being a gentleman, you naturally won't fight the case. In fact, I'm sure you'll agree that the more quietly it's handled, the less scandal will be attached to it. Now, about the property settlement... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just a moment, just a moment. Just a moment, please. Now, the first thing I shall demand is that Mrs. Butler be given the house free and clear, and then... Hello. Uh, who is this, Opal? Oh, this is Mr. Butler. I would like to speak to Mrs. Butler. As far as the automobiles are concerned, I shall be perfectly willing to allow you to retain yours. Hello. I'm sorry, Mr. Butler, but she says she ain't home. Oh, she did, huh? Well, shall we get down to business? Yes, Mr. Butler? Tell my attorney, Mr. Kimball, to come over right away. Despite your objections, Miss Kimball, the fact remains that my client wants her freedom and has employed me to act for her. I concede your point, Mr. Wayne. 
But I protest that you are not giving my client, Mr. Butler, the respect and consideration due him. Naturally, we will file objections to the charges in Mrs. Butler's complaint. Very well. If you and Mr. Butler want to fight, we'll give it to you. I was hoping that we could come to some mutually satisfactory agreement, but obviously I was wrong. I should hope so. Effie, you don't know what you're doing. If you'd only let me talk to you as a friend. Mr. Kimball, I shouldn't have to remind you that your actions are rather unethical. I apologize. Now, the first step is for you to establish another residence. Move out of my home? Yes. Oh, no. I don't want to do that. With all my pretty things, furniture, my pictures. Oh, no. No, I won't do that. Very well, in that case, it's up to Mr. Butler to move out. Who, me? Yes. I won't. Out of my own home, I won't budge. And you can't make me. Can he? No. Very well. Then I shall insist, Mrs. Butler, that you install a third person in this house as a witness who can testify in court that you and your husband are living apart. In that case, I shall insist that Mr. Butler have a witness also. Yeah, yeah. I have a complete list of the community property and shall insist upon Mrs. Butler receiving her full share. What did you say about community property? Just a moment, please. Mr. Kimball and I will take care of the details if you will just sit down and be quiet. Be quiet? In my own home? About my own divorce? Well, this is a fine state of affairs. I can't open my mouth in my own home. Well, let me tell you something. I'm a free American citizen. I pay taxes, and I have a right to free speech, liberty, and, and pursuit of happiness, and all that stuff. And I can't talk, eh? And you stand there and tell me to get out of my own home and leave behind all the things I paid for. I paid for this, and this, and this, and that, and that, and that, and this here, and that. I didn't know your husband had such a violent temper. Neither did I. I shall take steps to protect you from any further outburst. Oh, thank you. I, I think I'll go to my room. When I got your telegram, Aunt Effie, I couldn't quite figure it out. What do you mean by my being a witness? What's it all about? I'm divorcing Henry. Divorcing Uncle Henry? Oh, you're not serious. Never was more serious in my life. But you two have always been so happy. Yes. We were until... Well, if you must know, there's another woman. Oh, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Nevertheless, it's true. Uncle Henry, a playboy? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, eh? If you had a husband who stayed out all night and came home with Z's in his pocket and guilt written all over his face, perhaps you'd understand my present frame of mind. Well, that certainly is a shock. Oh, what shall I do with these? Oh, they're Henry's. I moved him across to the guest room. I must have forgotten these. Just take them over to you and put them in his dresser, will you please? The second drawer. Uh, uh, the right-hand corner. to shoot all intruders. No trespassing allowed. Oh, you must be Uncle Henry's keeper. Something like that. Well, I'm on the other side of the fence. So that sort of makes us enemies. Does it? Well, can't be compromised and be sort of friendly enemies. Why not? I never quarrel with lawyers. Hey, how did you know I was interested in law? Purely elementary, Watson. For one thing, you're wearing a Phi Beta Kappa key. And you use such words as compromise and trespass. Marvelous. Such deduction, Sherlock. But I still have some hurdles to jump before I become a full-fledged lawyer. Simple little things like passing my bar exams and finding some clients. And when you do hang out your shingle, what are you going in for? Divorce cases? Uh, not me. I think divorce is, well, sort of tragic. I'd rather be the kind of a lawyer who keeps couples together. Take this case, for instance. It's all wrong. It just doesn't add up. Gee, I'm glad to hear you say that. That's the way I feel. Well, I better be getting back to Aunt Effie. Say! How's about telling the fellow your name? Jane Forbes. Forbes. That's pretty. I like that. And yours? Kindly step this way. Miss Forbes, allow me to present Mr. Bob Grant. Charmed, I'm sure. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. 
<laughs> well, I'll see you later. You don't. Well, grand old man, it begins to look like his job has possibilities. Hey, old Bengals, I can't get you no quicker. Is this the Butler residence? Yes. Well, step aside, eight ball, and tell Mrs. Butler that Gooch Mulligan's here. I'm Miss Butler. What do you want to see me about? Well, lady, I'm a private detective and a bodyguard. Mr. Wayne sent me around. He said I was to protect you in case that tough guy you're married to gets violent again. He did? Yeah. Well, make yourself at home. Thanks. Here, put it away. Never mind about that, I'll take care of it. Hello, Memphis, I... Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought I was in the wrong house. I thought it was 814. This is 814. Hey, what is this, a game or something? What do you want? I want to come in, this is my home. Are you Henry Butler? Yes. Who are you? Never mind who I am. I'm very sorry. Oh, fresh cake, huh? Tough, eh? I guess you got something. I'm going to fist you. What do you got? What? Oh, what? Oh, just a pipe, huh? Oh, just my pipe. Careful. Look out for that thing. Look. Careful, careful with that. It's loaded. Look out. Put it out of the other way. Man, look out. Look out. That's loaded, man. Let's get up. Tonight? Oh, now don't tell me you're going to waste another perfectly good evening for some old... Waste thing. another evening? Do you know of any better way of getting some easy dough? And big dough, too. You may get that fur coat and a diamond necklace. And uh, what about the honeymoon in Hawaii? Oh, sure, sure. Well, just be patient, honey. You're not giving me the runaround, are you, Gil? Runaround? Well, hey, whatever put such an idea into your pretty head? Oh, I don't know. It's just that you're mixed up with so many women all the time. Look, in the divorce racket, the smart guy always represents the woman. That's where the big dough is. She gets the cash settlement. And the bigger the settlement, the easier it is to get a good-sized chunk of it, see? Come on, let's have a little smile. Mm. That's more like it. <laughs> Look, I want you to come along with me tonight. If the old girl has weakened and won't sign, I may need your help. Okay. At least I'll get a smell of an idea, Ranger. I'm so glad things turned out this way. It's much better. I am, too. Say you're all right. It's nice, but... Yeah. Thank you. Well, I guess there's nothing I can do here, so I'll be running along. Oh, my watch must have stopped. Have you the time? Quarter past eight. Thank you. Come on, Mr. Butler. We've got four hearts to make here. I hope I haven't broken up the game. Who's winning? Oh, we just started. It looks as though Henry's on the way to a little slam. <laughs> oh, Don, we just happen to have all the cards. Well, it's pretty hard to beat someone who has all the cards, especially if he knows how to play them. Good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is Mr. Butler in? Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, tell him that Evelyn would like to see him. Uh, uh, Evelyn? Yes, Evelyn. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll tell him he was here. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Butler. But there's a Miss Evelyn to see. Evelyn? Yes. She's right out here in the hall. Evelyn? Out in the hall? I don't know any Evelyn. <laughs> Excuse me. Henry, you old darling. Mm -hmm. What was the idea of going home so early the other night? Well, the party was just getting hot. Uh, Why, Evelyn? You got me mistaken for somebody else. I don't know you. You don't know me. No. Why, Henry Butler. <laughs> that is a good one. You don't know me. Oh, why, Lemmy Pie. And by the way, where's my shoe? What was the idea of running away with it in the first place, you cute little dick and you? Shoe? Sure, running away with it? Well, I don't know what oh, you're talking about. I don't... Henry. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to get you in trouble. 
Uh, just give me my shoe and I'll run along. I tell you, I haven't got your shoe. You've got your shoes. Oh, I got that's my... right. Have it your own way. But get this, playboy. The next time, don't carry a joke so far. Good night. <gasps> oh! <laughs> shoes and... Uh, that's that's funny. She said I had a shoe. I, I I didn't have a shoe. I don't I don't know that woman from Adam. <laughs> she she's telling me she Give me your paper and your pen. I, oh, Effie. Uh oh, here we go again. You, you know what you're doing now, Effie. Is that all? Yes, thank you. Evelyn. I mean uh, Effie. 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 Say, where do you think you're going? You know, things like that depress me. Well, good night. Good night. Say good night to Mrs. Butler. Yes, I will. Stand aside, sir. Stand aside with this figure. Oh, yes, you want to... I want to bust it, huh? Well, what's your verdict? Something's rotten in Denmark. I think so, too. This is the end, Jane. Absolutely the end. Oh, no, Auntie, please, you... There's no use of talking. It's as plain as day. Well, I saw it with my own eyes. You old darling. Lammy pie. You cute little dickens. You can't argue me out of that. Butler, are you sure you don't know this girl? Try to think. Think hard. I don't have to think. I know. I tell you, I never saw her before in my life. Are you positive? Don't you think I know who I know and who I don't know? Yes, but I... I tell you, I never saw that woman before in my life. Pipe down, you. I tell you, I never saw her before in my... Say, what is this? Me whispering in my own house. What am I? A mice or a man? Why, he can't stop me from talking to my own wife. I'm going over there and clean this whole thing up. None of that, Pappy. Well, that's telling them. I'll bet this isn't the first time. No wonder Grace Norman gave me that laugh. I'll bet she knew the whole time of it. Hello? Oh, hello, Grace. No, I, I, I'm not in the mood for a party tonight. No, I don't feel... Who? He is. That might be a good idea. Hmm. All right, Grace. All right, goodbye, Dad. Going out? Yes. Grace Norman's having a party. Mr. Wayne will be there. And I'm going to celebrate my divorce. And am I going to get tight? Oh, excuse me, Effie. My, you look beautiful. I want to see you about something. Don't wait up on me. I won't be home until morning. <laughs> what do I care? It means nothing to me. It's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Don't wait up for me. I may not be back till morning. And I don't know what morning. <laughs> Boy, are they both putting on an act. Yes, a couple of Pagliacci's. Oh, God, we had that situation right in the palm of our hand until Al Evelyn came looking for her shoe. Incidentally, that, that sounded mighty fishy to me, didn't it to you? Yes. But you know Uncle Henry did come home with a shoe in his pocket the other night. He did? Certainly. That's what started the whole thing. Didn't you know? No. Come in here. Exhibit A, as you lawyers would say. What size do you think this is? Oh, five, five and a half. 
I wish I'd paid more attention to that girl's feet. Did you notice them? As a matter of fact, I did. So? Well, she's no Cinderella. Well, that makes it fisher than ever. I wonder who she is. Gooch knows who she is. Huh? A wise look passed between them. I caught it. Ah, uh, you've been reading too many detective stories. I still say Gooch knows her and probably knows where she lives. That makes it easy. Perhaps easier than you think. Another idea? Are you sure that dog is dead? <laughs> uh oh, another customer. I'll be back in a flash. All right. <laughs> Effie, darling. Hello, Grace. I'm so glad you decided to come. It'll do you good. Gil'll be here in a minute. He's breaking another date. Come on and meet the gang. Hey, gang. This is Effie Butler. Oh, she won't be using the butler no. much longer. You remember Miss Hill and Mr. Thorne? How do you do? And you know Dick Gordon. Hey, Dick, get Effie a drink. What would you oh, like? Oh, so glad. Get her a bourbon and soda. Oh, hey, no, but I don't... Uh, hey, Ronnie, go. Ronnie, go. Ronnie, go. There's a solution. There's a solution. Uh, don't you tell me. Don't you tell me. Let me get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I got it. I got it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care of yourself, pal. Take care. Oh, wrong direction. Oh, Mr. Gooch. Yeah. You're wanted on the phone. Thanks, lady. Hello. 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 Wasn't nobody there. Oh, she must have hung up. Well, didn't you say who she was or nothing? No. That's funny. I got a couple of gals on the string, but I never gave any of them this number. The only one girl I know would call me here. Maybe she's the one, pal. Is this the Royal Arms apartment? Give me apartment number 216. Nan, did you call me at the butler joint? No, I didn't. Do you think I'm crazy? Well, somebody called me here and I thought it was you. Well, you taught wrong. It wasn't me. Goodbye. Did you get it? The Royal Arms, apartment 216. Darling. I'm all ready. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait till I get on that dance floor. Seems too good to be true. What's that? I'm awfully sorry, hon, but I've got to disappoint you. A business date has just come up. A business date, huh? Yes, a business date, and I mean it. Well, I don't believe you. What do you think of that? I'm through listening to you. Fed up with being shoved aside. You can't tell me you're going on a business date and get away with it. Why don't you come clean and tell me you're rushing one of those rich clients of yours? How do I know you're not planning to marry one of them? Give me the air. You're acting like a fool. Well, I'm sick of the way you're treating me. I stay in here night after night while you drag those rich mamas around nightclubs. I'm beginning to think that honeymoon in a bar is a fairy tale. And I'm beginning to get tired of hearing the same old squawk all the oh, time. Oh, you are? Huh? Yes. Well, if you go out that door tonight, all bets are off. I'm through. Is that the way you feel about it? That's the way I feel about it. Well, that suits me.
Come in. You better save that for Wayne. He might come back, although uh, I doubt it. What? What's the idea? Oh, nothing. Just checking up. I wanted to get a few things straightened out. This little frame up on Mr. Butler, for instance. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. Now, let's get down to facts. You're working with Gilbert Wayne on this divorce record, aren't you? Crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. But that gag and the missing shoe didn't ring true to me. No. Nevertheless, the fact remains he took it. When did he take it? That's my business. Oh, I see. And you had to come home on only one shoe, huh? Yes. Where is it? Where's what? The shoe that you had to hobble home in. Oh, well, well. it's in there. Let's see it. All right. There. So this is it, huh? Yes. You're pretty much of an amateur at this sort of thing, aren't you? A smart girl would find out the color of the missing shoe first, and then do her bluffing. This is the shoe Mr. Butler brought home. Mighty poor match, I'd say. And both from the left foot, too. All right, wise guy. It was a frame-up. So what? So? Thanks. You hear that? Great work, Sherlock. Elementary, Watson. Purely elementary. And uh, which would you like to ride in? A patrol wagon or a taxi? Okay, you win. Let's go. Carol, you're the one I want. Listen, Carol, you got me into a mess. Now you got to get me out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take you home and show my wife. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh excuse me. Excuse me. You, you, you can't. Come on, can you? Come on. I'll take care of it. You take you home and we clean up this whole affair. And then we all rode home on the milk wagon in evening clothes, and we gave the driver five bucks to help us deliver the milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must be Gil. Oh. Well, hello. hello. Come on in. So sorry to be a little late. Better late than never. Looks like you're all way ahead of me. Uh, will you excuse me, please? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Wayne. Good evening, Mrs. Butler. <laughs> Oh, you look like a new woman. I feel like one, too. Don't believe a word he says. He tells that to all his clients. No. Come on in. <laughs> Forward march. You don't have to worry about these men flirting with the architecture. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Mind your own business. Go on, you old flirtier. Come on, Carol. Uh... Carol, Carol, come back here. Come back here. Hello, Cleveland headquarters. Are you fellas still looking for a lawyer by the name of George Wilson? In connection with the divorce racket? Well, he's here, pulling the same stuff. Yeah, got a fancy name, Gilbert Wayne. Tie that, will you? You want us to pick him up for you? Okay, call you back. Your boyfriend gets around, doesn't he? Austin, Miami, Cleveland? Any idea where he is right now? No, but wherever he is, I'll bet Mrs. Butler is with him. In that case, I suggest you call Mrs. Grace Norman. Yeah, this is my home. It was. Well, I guess everybody's going to bed. Come on, we'll, we'll go upstairs and wake him up. Yeah, everybody's going to bed. Well, it's a little late. Oh, now watch yourself. Now watch yourself. I know you're tired. Pull yourself together. Now, all I want you to do, Carol, is explain everything to my wife, and then you can go home. Get the idea? Come on, come on. Up, say goes. Up, say daisy. Whoopsie woozy. Wowsy wowsy. A choosy woozy. Thanks very much. Goodbye. He was there, but he just left. He's taking Mrs. Butler home. I think we'll give the gentleman a little surprise. O'Connor. Dombrowski. <laughs> 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 oh, what a party. <laughs> still is, as far as I can see. Good evening, Mr. Wilson. My name is not Wilson. 
tell that to the judge in Boston or Miami or Cleveland. Take your choice. Why, why, officer, what is this all about? Yes, Mr. Wayne's past catching up with him, Aunt Effie. Yes, it seems you're not the only victim of his little racket, Mrs. Butler. Racket? Yes. You remember Evelyn and her little shoe? That was one of Mr. Wayne's little tricks. That's right, Mrs. Butler. Why, you dirty little chisel. Oh, the shoe's on the other foot, Gil, and you're going to get it. Come on, you, get going. You got a long train ride ahead of you. Oh. I'm sorry for everything I did tonight, Mrs. Butler, except that. But if you ask me, I think we're both well rid of a big headache. Oh, dear. Oh, I don't seem to see what this is all about. Well, what's my next move? Why, you've never been in Boston, Cleveland, Miami, have you? No. Well, then, forget about it. Thank you very much. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh. oh. <laughs> the wrong one. There's no use breaking up a pair. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Good night. Good night. And to think that I ever mistrusted him. Now, Auntie, all you have to do is go upstairs and tell him you're sorry. Sure, Mrs. Butler, that's all there is to it. Oh, I hope you're right, Bob, but I... But he still hasn't told me where this came from the night of our wedding anniversary. Auntie, now don't get excited again. Well, take it easy. And don't worry about a thing, because I'm... I'm... Where are Oh, uh, I don't worry about anything. I, I'll take care of you. I'm sure he can explain it. Oh. Yes, just give him a chance. It's one step here, Lou. Easy now, easy, easy. Oh! oh. oh. Sorry, I'm, I'm awfully sorry this happened, but you know how things are uh, when you when you're not ready. Hi, right, folks. Oh! Henry Butler. Oh, honey, I want you to meet uh, Carol from Max Wetsworth. Oh! Yeah, Carol, this is my wife. Hey, that's what we've been looking for. Give me, give me, give me, give me. There you are. Oh. One, two. That's what I've been trying to tell you all the time, honey. Try, try, quick, 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 quick. Now we start right from the beginning. Oh, no, me, I don't want to hear it. left me along with Carol. Me. And I was carrying over to put her on the bed. Darling. And she slipped and fell and was looked at her on the bed. And there was a bunch of big gas down the side of her head. So I picked her up to go Max. Max said he picked her up and said they were not going to go. So on the way home, I was going to go. I got to go to the other.